Hello everyone, and before you get started in today's scheduled content, I just want to remind you that 94% of my viewers aren't subscribed to the channel. So, if you aren't subscribed, go ahead and go down there and subscribe just for a brief moment before you get started with today's episode. That'd be greatly appreciated. Now back to your scheduled content. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode on the Sports Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Sagey McSwain. And for today's episode, I'm going to be going over my week, what are we in, week four, week five? I think we're in week five already, wow. Uh, week five predictions for the NFL season. Um, and we got some pretty good matchups, some pretty big blowouts, and uh, there were a lot of disappointments last week. So uh, let's get right into this episode. Now coming in with the first matchup, we have the Thursday night matchup uh, with the Colts at the Broncos. Now the Colts coming off of a loss, a uh, tough close loss to the Titans, losing by seven. Um, and overall, just not great play by the Colts offensive line. And this is kind of interesting because recently uh, the Colts offensive line has been regarded as one of the best offensive lines in the league. Uh, but, I mean, this game is just, I mean, it wasn't that good. Uh, Matt Ryan was sacked three times, I believe. Uh, two of those uh, were fumbles. Um, they ended up losing one, uh, luckily secured one. And just the offensive line was not playing well today. Jonathan Taylor only had 42 yards on 20 carries. Um, and the only other rusher that had uh, other yards were well, was Matt Ryan with negative four yards on two carries so really um or technically i guess those are sacks but basically i mean the offense line just wasn't playing great um they did give matt ryan enough time to throw to his top three receivers miley cox alec pearson grandson um michael Pittman jr was basically virtually shut down during the titans game only had three receptions for 31 yards and overall just i mean it wasn't that great of a performance by Indiana and looking at it defensively uh, they I mean you know they were to get in the backfield but uh, Derrick Henry uh, he he's shown that he c- could be back um, but I'll talk about the times later on in the episode once it gets to the times matchup but overall the Colts just didn't look great on defense and offensively just mainly the offensive line just uh, hasn't been able to open up a good stable rushing game for Jonathan Taylor like they did last year and Matt Ryan just getting hit in the backfield constantly. And then as for the Broncos, they're coming off of a loss on uh, Sunday afternoon to the Raiders. Now that one, pretty interesting. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to watch it, but I was watching some highlights. And, I mean, it was a pretty decent game all the way through until near the end where the Raiders kind of, uh, you know, pulled away. But uh, Russell Wilson was sacked three times and... Uh, the entire team was only able to get 85 rushing yards as their top leading rusher was Russell Wilson with 29 yards on four carries. Uh, Javante Williams did end up tearing his ACL, unfortunately, during this game. He had 28 yards on 10 carries, uh, so I do wish him the best in his recovery. Um, and next up was Melvin Gordon, I believe, who only had eight yards on three carries. Um, however, I mean, through the receiving game, they did pretty good. K.J. Hamler did his thing 55 yards Jerry Judy 53 yards four receptions and a touchdown and Cortland Sutton also had a touchdown uh with 52 yards and five receptions so I mean they're they're opening some things up in the air game um Melvin Gordon did fumble one which led to a turnover uh there which was pretty crucial um I mean the Broncos defense was able to get back in the backfield with two sacks and seven tackles for loss on 77 total tackles um but i mean overall the broncos uh they 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 kept it really competitive against a raiders team with uh you know who people were doubting um but the raiders were able to pull away near the end and uh so far through the season we just haven't been able to see denver really finish um off games i mean they they again super close to winning and then they just can't really close it the seahawks won week one um and uh now the Raiders won. So uh it, it's it's been tough for the Broncos uh so far this season. I think a lot of people have been really critical, especially since the uh since we had really high expectations for them going into the season with them having Russell Wilson and uh them just not being able to 
uh, at least have more success than we would have thought. Uh, but as for this matchup, I I have the Broncos winning this one by three. I think it's going to be a really close one because, I mean, all the Broncos games have been close. Um, and I think it's, it's going to be a really heavy uh, defensive matchup. I think the Broncos have a great defense. They show that against the Raiders offensive line um, and through the secondary as well. And then also I think the Colts defensively are probably going to step up in this game and really have a performance against the Broncos offensive line that isn't that good either. Um, and I, I think both defenses are great defenses, and I think they can definitely do something. So I'll have to see what they do here. Um, but as for this game, again, I'll have the Broncos by three. Now, next up, I think a really underrated game that's going to be happening early Sunday morning since this one's a London game. Uh, I think this matchup is going to go pretty under the radar. But uh, next up is the Giants at the Packers, in parentheses, or in uh, quotation marks, uh, because it's going to be in London. Uh, but the Packers are playing as the home team here. Uh, now, New York coming off of a big win against the Bears, uh, kind of, you know, getting them back into that rhythm that they had uh, earlier on in the season before the loss uh, last last week to the Cowboys. Um, um, but, I mean, looking at the Giants here, I mean, Dan Jones had a horrendous performance, as usual. Only eight completions on 13 attempts, uh, but Saquon Barkley is him, okay? Saquon Barkley was basically carrying the Giants in this one. 146 yards off 31 carries. And no touchdowns, shockingly. Uh, Daniel Jones had two rushing touchdowns and 68 yards running. That's funny. Uh, Daniel Jones has three less rushing yards um, than he did passing yards. And then also he had uh, two less carries than he did have completions. So uh, Daniel Jones is not the best quarterback. I don't really see him possibly getting extended. Even if the Giants do possibly make the playoffs, I don't see him getting a contract extension. Uh, after this season, he just hasn't proven himself uh, to really get another contract negotiation here. So I, I do see the Giants possibly moving on from him, even if they do make the playoffs. Uh, but Saquon Barkley was doing his thing. I mean, through the receipt, the shooting game is really bad. Definitely the hit by uh, or the loss of Shepard uh, definitely was, uh, you know, definitely did hurt the team uh, due to that non-contact ACL tear uh, with the turf there. And uh, just wasn't looking too good. Um, I mean, they did. Uh, the Giants did fumble two uh, two times. Uh, they only lost one. Um, uh, the I mean, the giant the Giants defense line was going crazy, absolutely crazy against a Bears offensive line that wasn't that great. They had six sacks and six tackles for loss, uh, with seventy total tackles. So I mean, the Giants defense did good. Uh, they did really good, but again, that's kind of against the Bears' offensive line, which uh, really hasn't proven much. Um, and then also, um, Saquon Barkley just, I mean, basically carrying the entire team on his back. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he had, he had, a, he was top three in receiving for the team. I mean, then again, it was only 16 receiving yards, and then first on the team with rushing. And I believe he was out there in quarterback too, um, but. I don't really know what his stats were for uh, playing at quarterback, but overall, I think it was a uh, it was a great game played by the Giants defense and Saquon Barkley. Um, and then going over to the Packers game, uh, where they won in a thriller against the injured Patriots in overtime, winning twenty-seven to twenty-four off of a game-winning kick by Mason Crosby. Um, who's basically the kicking goat, even though he, I believe he missed, did he miss a kick this game? I want to think about a different game. I might be think, thinking of a different game. Um, yeah, okay, he didn't miss, he didn't miss a field goal at all in this game. I, th I think I was just thinking about a different game that happened, because kickers out here just missing left and right. Um, but, and the Packers had a great game against the Patriots. Uh, Aaron Rodgers had 21 completions uh, for 251 yards and two touchdowns to one interception. I was only sacked once. Um, and then, I mean, Aaron Jones is going off 110 yards on 16 carries against a pretty weak Patriots uh, defense. And then Alan Lazard went off for 116 yards and six receptions. Um, 
And that was really about it through the air for uh, the Packers. Now, the Packers did fumble twice. They only lost one. Um, and the defense was able to get four sacks um, on both Brian Hoyer and Bailey Zapp. Zappy. I'm not really sure how you say his last name. Um, and they also got six tackles for loss on 73 total tackles. So, I mean, the Packers are doing their thing. Um, but they did really struggle against a backup quarter, both backup quarterbacks for the Patriots. Um, as Brian Hoyer did start off the game, and then he ended up getting injured. Uh, and then Bailey Zapp went in and uh, got that game tying, um, game tying touchdown, I believe. Um, and I mean, yeah, the Packers were surprisingly struggling against a Patriots team that isn't all the way healthy um so that that was interesting to see I did have the Patriots winning that one and I, I picked that as my upset of the week and it almost came true I had the Patriots by one and they ended up losing by three so I think I was pretty close in that prediction um but overall I mean it just it was kind of interesting that the Packers really struggled against uh two backup quarterbacks and a receiver core that isn't all that great and a defense that isn't all that great either um, so, uh, this one, I was, it was kind of a toss up in the air for me personally, because I was like, uh, you know, Giants been looking great Packers. I mean, are the Packers. So, you know, this one's kind of a, and this could go either way, but, uh, as for this one, I do have the Giants winning by four. Now, next up we have the Lions at the Patriots. Uh, now the Lions coming off of a loss against Seattle. Um first scoregami game of the season ending in forty eight forty five. Um which was pretty interesting that the Lions were able to accomplish something by losing. Um and that's something pretty normal as a Lions fan that I have to experience. Um but I mean the offense did offense did amazing, as usual. R rarely do I ever give Jared Goff props, but for this game, Jared Goff gets my approval, man. You know, Jared Jared Goff Jared Goff, you know, he, he did his thing. He did what he could, okay? Um, he basically played a really good game, you know, not thinking back on it. I mean, he he played really good uh, besides the pick six that he threw to open off the half. Um, you know, uh, that's always great to see, you know, just, just you know, he threw a complete dot uh, to Wooly, I want to say, uh, on the Seahawks, a rookie. Um, and, I mean, he, just, he threw a complete dot to the defense, um, and that one was ran back for a pick six. Um, but Jared Goff, he went, he went 26 for 39, 378 yards, four touchdowns, one interception, and he was only sacked one side. The Lions offense line was doing really great this game. Uh, Jamal Williams stepping in that role for, uh, DeAndre Swift, who was injured, um, and who's probably injured for this game as well. Um, he stepped in really nicely into the role, 108 yards on 19 carries. And TJ Hawkinson's back, okay? I was I was worried. I was worried about TJ Hawkinson, man. I mean he 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 just did not look good. Uh I mean he just it just it just, it was not it was not working out, man. I was I was kinda worried. I was like, oh no. Oh no. But and there were also rumors of him possibly getting traded. But this game, he, he definitely proved that he's back. 179 yards, eight receptions, two touchdowns both of which came really late into the game, which kind of kept the Lions in it constantly. Josh Reynolds had a great game stepping in as the starting receiver there uh, for, since Amon Ross St. Brown was injured. Uh, DJ Shark was also out for the Seahawks game. And then Quintez Cephas went down during the Seahawks game. So Josh Reynolds, I think, stepped really nicely, you know, stepped up really good into this role, 81 yards, seven receptions, and a touchdown, which, I mean, was an absolute head top off of the defender and a hold call too. I mean that was that was a great catch. Kept the ball all the way through. I mean his his control is great. And then Tom Kennedy, fifty four yards on three receptions. Uh who I think is a receiver that goes kind of under the radar. Um somebody else to mention, Andy Isabella, who was just released by the Cardinals. Um he he he's kinda of, Tom Kennedy kinda of plays like him. He's a shorter receiver um, you know, slot guy, uh, but he, he's a really reliable target, uh, throughout the last couple seasons for Jared Goff, so, I mean, that was great to see there, now, Khalif Raymond did fumble the ball on a pass, 
it's like a catch, run, boom, punched out, lost it. I think a lot of lost opportunities for the Lions really hindered them uh, from winning this game. Um, and then just speaking of the defensive play, zero sacks, only four tackles for loss. Uh, the Lions defense was just playing horrendous. Uh, now a lot of people are like, oh, why why is nobody talking about the Seahawks defense? I mean, Seahawks defense was absolutely terrible. But the main, my main reason for bringing up the Lions defense is because the Lions have the highest scoring offense with 35 points on average, okay? 35 points on average is hard, is hard to do as an offense, right? And if you think if the Bills were putting up 35 points a game, uh, which they were earlier on the season, they, I mean, they would be undefeated right now. The Lions offense is doing great, okay? Even with this many people out, DeAndre Swift, Amon Ross St. Brown, DJ Shark, uh, Quintez Cephas, um, defensively, Tracy Walker is out, who's a big captain for the defense. And, you know, a lot, all these injuries happening to the team. I mean, this was a, uh, you know, the defensive play was just terrible. I mean, they were getting in the backfield and nobody was there, okay? Uh, Rashad Penny already had a first down. Uh, Geno Smith was just evading sacks. Like he he just duck, and he's and he's gone for like a twenty plus yard run. Um, and this Aaron Glenn defense, I get that it is very man coverage heavy. Um, in this in this type of defense, uh, but I mean they're putting a, up a quarterback spot, but he's getting pulled off from the center. So really, Geno Smith just has a wide open gaping hole to run through. Okay. Um, and I mean if you're if you're, I mean, the Lions have done really poorly against mobile quarterbacks. Week one against Jalen Hurts was a terrible performance, uh, guarding him uh, specifically. Um, and then also, you know, this game, really bad performance, trying to get that, you know, all sorted out together. It it just was not, it is not great. Um, and the defense, the defense was just allowing scores. I mean, Rashad Penny basically got... A touchdown uh, to go up 48 to uh, 30, 38, 40 to 38. And then, I mean, the Lions did answer back with the touchdown from TJ Hawkinson. Um, and then, uh, but they just weren't able to get that onside kick. And again, they were in a position kind of like the Eagles game where they just needed one more stop. They had all three timeouts on that last Seahawks drive. Um, and it was, a, it was a crucial third and one, third and short. And uh, the Lions ended up giving, getting, you know, giving away a first down here, uh, first down run. So it, it just overall was not a great performance by the Lions defense. And I think that's what's kind of hindering them from winning games. I mean, uh, the Lions offense is averaging the most points in the league and the Lions defense is giving up the most points in the league. So um, I think there are big adjustments that need to be made uh, if you're you know, on the Lions defense side of the ball that uh, need to be changed. And uh, I think it really starts off with the fundamentals of the game um, and possibly getting mindsets correct. Uh, it just doesn't look like they're in the right place uh, as of right now. Uh, but moving on to the Patriots, I mean, they had a great, great game. Again, I spoke a little bit on it uh, against the Packers. I mean, have one of your best players, Mac Jones, out, your starting quarterback, um, who was really a game-time decision, but I'm not really sure. I feel like they kind of had a consensus that he was going to be out. I mean, that injury looked really painful. Um like just his face just looked very painful. So, um, you know, Patriots coming in, having uh, you know, having an injured quarterback, not always you know preferred, but Patriots did really good. They kept it close against a really good Packers team. Uh, Bailey Zapp had um, ten completions on ninety nine yards with one touchdown. He was sacked three times. Not the best performance for the Patriots offensive line. But the Patriots' offensive line has really been that good anyway. Um, as I said, Brian Hoyer was in the game. He had five completions on six attempts uh, for 37 yards, but he was injured during the game. Uh, but he did uh, he did have a decent performance. Sorry. Um, I think he had a de decent performance. Uh, Damian Harris did really good, 86 yards on 18 carries. And then Ramondre Stevenson with 66 yards on 14 carries. And Bailey Zapp did lose a fumble. 
You know, he did lose a fumble there. Uh, defensively, they got a sack and a tackle for loss. So, I mean, the defense just isn't good, okay? And that's that's something I did bring up in that Packers matchup is that they're playing against a Patriots defense that isn't that good. Um, but just looking at stats, doesn't really tell the whole story. But I think overall they played really well um, and really kept it close against a good team, um, surprisingly. Um, so... I do have to give the Patriots props for this one on getting it done. Um, but as for this game, I think if the Lions are able to make some really crucial defensive adjustments, it most likely it looks like the Patriots are going to be starting uh, Bailey Zapp for this one, I believe. I don't I don't think Mac Jones is going to be playing in this one. Uh, but, the, you know, the Lions, they're banged up. The Patriots are banged up. But if the Lions can really make some big key defensive moves, and, uh, you know, and just keep the offense rolling here. I think they can definitely get a win over the Patriots. So give me the Lions. Now, next up, we have the Chargers at the Browns. Now, the Chargers coming off of a win against the Texans. Now, Justin Herbert, you know, he did he did pretty good. 27 completions, 39 attempts, 340 yards, two touchdowns, zero interception. It was only zero interceptions. And was only sacked once for two yards. So, really overall, pretty really good game. Austin Eckler also had a big one, uh, 60 yards on 13 carries and two touchdowns. And then Mike Williams was going off, 120 yards, seven receptions. And Gerald Everett, 61 yards on five receptions and a touchdown. Um, you know, DeAndre Carter did lose one. Um, you know, lost a fumble. Austin Eckler did fumble, but the Chargers were able to get it back. Um, and the Chargers defense was able to get back in the backfield four ta- or four sacks and, uh, and six tackles for a loss on 58 total tackles. And the team also had two interceptions. So, I mean, overall, Chargers were doing a really great job at just limiting the Texans. Now, the Texans were up a little bit early, um, but uh, they were able to keep it close. But the Chargers were able to really uh, stretch out their lead near the end there and get the lead over by 10 and then uh, were able to seal off the game there. So I think overall the Chargers did a really great job. Sorry. Uh, the Chargers did a really great job at just uh, limiting the Texans from coming back. Uh, there is definitely a need needed bounce back game. Uh, Chargers were coming off of a humiliating loss to the Jaguars. Uh, wasn't even close. So uh, it was a game that they definitely needed. It was definitely a ga- bounce back game that they needed, um, and they definitely did just that. And then for the Browns, they're coming off of a close loss to the Falcons. Um, they were doing pretty good. I mean, the Falcons had a big lead early, um, but as the Falcons did, they kind of choked it a little bit. Browns started coming back. Um and but the Falcons were able to close it off there. Jacoby Brissett had 21 completions on 35 attempts for 234 yards, no touchdowns and an interception. It was only sacked once. And Nick Chubb had a good game as usual, 118 yards on 19 carries and a touchdown. David Njoku had 73 yards on five receptions, and my man Donovan Peoples Jones DPJ had 71 yards on five receptions as well. Um. Really great performance, I think, overall by the Browns. But a crucial David Njoku fumble definitely didn't help them. As well as the defense only getting one sack and five tackles for loss on 49 total tackles was not great either. Um, And the Browns just, the Browns have looked like okay. You know, they're an okay team. I think definitely uh, if they are able to get Deshaun Watson back for the season, I think uh, the Browns are a pretty good team. They're pretty set. But, uh, I mean, I wouldn't really ride out Jacoby Brissett. I mean, I, I think he's a really good quarterback. He's definitely learned a lot of things. And, uh, you know, he's showing on the field. Uh, you know, there are some pretty big mistakes. But, um, overall, I think he's one of the better backup quarterbacks that you can have in the league. Um, but the Falcons just were able to overpower them uh, during the entire game. Uh, Browns did start a comeback, but, um, you know, the Falcons were able to just kind of seal that comeback off and uh, able to win the game. Um, but as for this one, I have a an upset. I think a lot of people are thinking that the Chargers are going to win, but give me the Browns by three. I think the Browns, um, you know, could 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 pull a little, 
pull a carpet under the Chargers, you know. Uh, I think, you know, the Chargers, they've already shown, you know, a little bit of their weaknesses. Now, the, uh, the loss to the Jaguars one week coming off of Justin Herbert's injury, so they were kind of unsure how he's going to play on that. Didn't play good. Um, but, I mean, you know, the team came back. Did good. Sorry. Did good against the Texans. But um, the Browns, I think, they have a team. I think they just need... They need someone, you know, just a push. And I think this game can start off that push. Um, so give me the Browns by three. Now, next up, I have the Texans at the Jaguars. Now, the Texans just went over their matchup. They're against the Chargers. Um, now, the Texans just, I mean, they didn't do that good. Um, Davis Mills had 246 yards on 26 completions for two touchdowns and two interceptions. He was sacked four times. I mean, the Texans offensive line just hasn't been great. Uh, Damian Pierce did his thing, though, 131 yards on 14 carries. Had a big one, a big 75-yarder there. Um, and then Nico Collins, 82 receiving yards on off three receptions. And Brandon Cooks also did his thing, 57 yards on seven receptions and a touchdown. Uh, but Davis Mills did fumble. Um, Reeves Maben did fumble, um, or uh, Jalen Reeves Maben did recover, and uh, Aikens did recover. Um, but Davis Mills did lose one. Um, and I mean, looking at the defense, I mean, they only get able to get one sack on Justin Herbert and only six tackles for losses on uh, loss on seventy two total tackles. I mean, overall, the Texans, they look good sometimes and they look like really bad um and this one just it was a decent performance there were some gems you know to be taken from this performance uh but overall i don't think that this performance is really that great uh they were playing against a really good team in the chargers and i think they just didn't know how to play them so uh the texans just ended up not being able to win really late into that game and they kept it really close to the beginning, but they just still haven't really been able to close one. And they're still the only team that has not won a game this so far this season. So um, that one is going to be interesting to see how that plays out. A lot of people do have a consensus that the Texans will be the worst team in the league, or at least one of the worst teams in the league. Um, and maybe, maybe, maybe that's so. Um, Texans just have not looked good uh, late into games it looks like the stamina is just kind of gone by the time they really need to either keep a lead or you know try and catch up with the team and uh, they just were not able to against the chargers then as for the jaguars they're coming off of a you know off of a loss against the eagles a lot of people were questioning you know is the, are the jaguars them me even myself in my head i was like are the jaguars really that team i did have the eagles winning this one um and, you know, the Jaguars, Jaguars, you know, ended up losing. Uh, but, I mean, so far, I mean, it, it, it's not that bad of a game. I mean, the Jaguars didn't do that good in this one. Um, Trevor Lawrence had uh, 174 yards on 11 completions, but he was sacked four times and had an interception. Uh, but he did have two touchdowns. Um, I mean, the rushing game was just terrible. The leading rush only had 32 yards. Uh, Christian Kirk did his thing, though, 60 yards on two receptions. And Jamal Agnew also uh, had 50 yards on four receptions and two touchdowns, uh, which were the only two passing touchdowns. Um, Trevor Lawrence fumbled the ball four times. Um, and uh, the Jaguars lost all four times. <laughs> um, uh, you know, James Robinson did have a fumble, but Christian Kirk was able to pick it up. Um I mean, the Jaguars defense only able to get two sacks and six tackles for loss with 91 total tackles against the Eagles offense that is really good um, and that is steamroll in the competition uh, The as the Eagles are the only undefeated team in the league. Um, but, the but I mean, the Jaguars just, their offensive performance did not look good. Their defensive performance didn't look good against a really good team. I'm surprised that they really were able to keep it this close, only within eight points. Um, but still, it just... It, the Jaguars, I mean, I think they're a good team. Uh, I think they just need to work out some things, just basically like any other team uh, would need to. So, I think overall, you know, there's some things to fix, clearly. 
Um, but, I mean, it's still a rebuilding team, and uh, there's a lot of improvement being shown here for it. So, and the Jaguars overall doing pretty good. But as for this game, I will have to take the Jaguars. I think overall they're just a better team compared to the Texans. Uh, the Jaguars offense uh, can definitely uh, beat that Texans defense, and I think the Jaguars defense uh, has a lot of work on their hands with the Texans offense, but I think the Jaguars can definitely get it done. Now, next up, we have a NFC South rivalry, or I guess divisional matchup. We have the Falcons at the Buccaneers. Now, the Falcons coming off of a close win against the Browns. I think they had a pretty good game. Uh, Marcus Mariota had 139 yards on only seven completions, no touchdowns, and an interception. I was also stacked once. Uh, Eligier, I mean, he had he had a pretty good game, 84 yards on 10 carries, and then Huntley had 56 yards on 10 carries, um, and Zay, uh, Zacchaeus had 55 yards on two receptions. So I mean, I mean, they're they're offensive performers. I mean, like Cordell Patterson and uh, you know Kyle Pitts really haven't been. They didn't show in this game. Uh, Kyle Pitts hasn't really showed throughout the season. Uh, he hasn't really had any really big games. Uh, Marcus Mario did fumble, um, but they were able to get it back. Um, and defensively, they're only able to get one sack and three tackles for loss and 77 total tackles. Um, and, I mean, they, they took the lead pretty early. Uh, they did, you know, start choking a little bit. They started giving up some points, um, but... The Falcons were able to, you know, show some diligence, and they were able to uh, seal it off there at the end to get the win by three. And then as for the Buccaneers, they played the Chiefs, and they ended up losing by ten. Uh, I wasn't able to see this game, but from what I've heard, it was a pretty good game. Um, sorry, excuse me. Um. Tom Brady had 385 yards on 39 completions with three touchdowns. He was sacked once, um, but, I mean, that that rushing attack was absolutely terrible. Um, and the Buccaneers' running attack just hasn't been good at all this year. Uh, White had only six rushing yards, and Leonard Fournette had negative three yards on three carries. Um, I mean, Mike Evans did his thing. Uh, first game back from suspension, 103 yards, eight receptions, two touchdowns. Godwin did his thing coming back from an injury, slight injury, you know, 59 yards, seven receptions. Leonard Fournette didn't do his thing in the backfield, but he did his thing in the receiving game. 57 yards, seven receptions on uh, with one touchdown. And then Rashad White, who didn't do his thing on the ground, but did his thing through the air, 50 yards on five receptions. So overall, I mean, the Buccaneers did pretty good. Um, you know, you know, trying to defend the ball there. Uh, Tom Brady, uh, did fumble, did lose it. Rashad White also fumbled, and they did lose the ball there. Um, the Buccaneers were able to get three sacks and five tackles for loss on 81 total tackles. Uh, but just a pro po really poor performance through the ground for the Buccaneers. They weren't really able to develop a rushing game against the Chiefs. Oh, sorry, that was my desk. But they weren't able to really get a rushing attack against the Chiefs, and I think that's what led to the loss here. Uh, but as for this game, I got another upset, another upset alert. I have the Falcons winning by five. I think I really believe in this Falcons team. I think they can do something. I think the Buccaneers have showed that if you shut down the run game, I mean, they can only go through the air so many times, and if once you make it a one-dimensional game, you know, then you can kind of take control. And I think the Falcons, if they're able to take control early, eliminate the rushing game, make it a one-dimensional game for the Buccaneers, they can definitely handle that. I mean, A.J. Terrell, Mike Evans, it's going to be a tough matchup, but I think A.J. Terrell can definitely do it. Um, and that Falcons defense is showing a little bit of promise here so far. So I think they're able to get control really early into the game. And just make it a one-dimensional game. The Falcons should be able to win this one. Now, next up is the Steelers at the Bills. Now, the Steelers. Big news coming out of here from the Steelers organizations. That they're going to have Kenny Pickett as the starting quarterback from now on. So far, at least. Um, it looks kind of like a what you would call a mid-off. I think uh, uh, I, I had really high hopes for Kenny Pickett. But him coming into the game, I mean, that was like. Pretty, I think that was probably the worst start that you could possibly have 
it's like going to your job and then like you breaking like literally everything <laughs> or like breaking like multiple items i like just you just get there first day and you're just breaking everything that that was kenny pickett on, on his first play throwing that pick uh right when he got uh right when he got in uh kenny pickett 10 completions with 120 yards and three interceptions um Great performance by the rookie, I would say, in his first game. Obviously, I think just some nerves to really get off, you know, there. I mean, obviously, uh, you're, not, you're not too nervous because, you know, you're not playing. But especially when it happens like that. I mean, Mr. Biskey wasn't doing good. Uh, 84 yards on seven completions and an interception. Um, and it just kind of seemed like the team was done with him. So they put in Kenny Pickett. And uh, I think there were just a lot of nerves happening there. Um, and he, you know, he didn't perform well. Um, but I think that's just, you know, part of it. I think, you know, first game jitters, you know, you just need to shake it off. Najee Harris did his thing on the ground, though, 74 yards on 18 carries. Um, Pickett's, uh, Pickens, uh, Pickett and Pickens, I think they have a really good connection. George Pickens, 102 yards, six receptions. I mean, Kenny Pickett was really showing that in the preseason. Um, and then Pat Fryermuth also had 85 yards on seven receptions, who I think is having a really breakout year so far. Um, you know, Kenny Pickett did have a fumble. Um, and Olsweski did have a fumble. But both fumbles were recovered uh, by them. Uh, but the Steelers defense is only able to force a sack and only five tackles for loss on 66 total tackles. And uh, I think it's I think it's really showing, um, you know, their, I think it's really showing their, uh, you know, hit, sorry, their hit that they had with TJ Watt. I think it, that's definitely showing in this one. And just them not being able to really stop um, some really big defensive plays um, or really big offensive plays, I should say. Um, and they just weren't able to do it. Um, and, I mean, obviously, Kenny Pickett throwing three interceptions and the Jets having four total interceptions on defense isn't the best uh, way to win a game, um, and that definitely showed there. And the Steelers just haven't really been on top of things. But again, it was only Kenny Pickett's first game. Najee Harris is getting back on the ground, as usual, uh, like he should have been earlier on in the season. Um, and I think George Pickens is a wide receiver to definitely look out for on fantasy because I think Pickett's going to be targeting him a little bit more throughout the throughout the season. If he is starting. And then as for the Bills coming off of an exciting win over the Ravens. I mean, the Ravens had the lead there, but uh, Bills were able to, you know, scratch and claw their way back in it. Uh, Josh Allen had 213 yards on 19 completions for a touchdown and an interception. And he was only sacked once. Uh, Josh Allen also had 70 rushing yards on 11 carries and a rushing touchdown. Um, Stephon Diggs did his thing. 62 yards, 4 receptions. Um... And they did. They they did have two fumbles. Josh Allen's fumble. They did get back with Devin Singletary's fumble. They did lose. Um, but the Bills' defense only able to force two sacks on five tackles for loss, with 68 total tackles. And I think uh, that that loss that that loss uh, for the Bills of Micah Hyde, I, I believe, uh, was definitely a really big hit and possibly Poyer. I want to say he wasn't in this game either. Or actually, no, Poyer was in this game. Sorry. Um, but I mean, definitely the losses of some really key defensive players, uh, main, namely, uh, Micah, Mike, uh, Micah Hyde, I think was definitely a big hit. And I think that's led to a lot of yards being put on the secondary. Um, and the rush just hasn't really been able to get back in the backfield as much as they were at the beginning of the season. Um, but as for this game, I do have the Bills winning. I think the Bills overall are a better team compared to the Steelers, and uh, definitely uh, can get the. I think this win, uh, the win against the Ravens, uh, now kind of starts the ball rolling back up again after that uh, pretty shocking loss against the Dolphins when they lost by two. Now next up, we have an AFC East matchup between the Dolphins and the Jets. Now the Dolphins going into New York. In MetLife Stadium, uh, going up against the Jets. Now, the Dolphins uh, facing a lot of backlash on Thursday's game, especially with the Tua controversy. Um, and uh, that independent doctor has been fired by the NFLPA um, and the NFL. 
I guess. Um, not really sure how that works, but definitely know that he's not an independent doctor anymore for the NFL. Um, and Tua uh, is uh, is labeled as out for this game. Um, I think I should say. Um, and uh, Tua is definitely out for this game. And just a lot of uh, backlash with, on the Dolphins. Uh, you know, a lot of people questioning, you know, did the Dolphins just kind of skimp out on his first concussion possibly against the Bills due to that one, you know, def- due to them needing him during the game. Did they? Did they not? Um, you know, it's only speculation. I can't really confirm anything. Um, but overall, I mean, Tua said that he's in very high spirits. Um, but I think, yeah, definitely it was, a, it was probably the best call to have him out for this game. Um Maybe for one more game. I'm not really sure. We'll have to see how he is uh, during you know practice and everything like that. Um, but Dolphins were under some heavy fire last night after the Tua hit, and they weren't able to secure the win against the Bengals. Uh, now Teddy Bridgewater stepped in the game, had 193 yards on 14 completions with a touchdown and an interception. Uh, Raheem Mostert also stepped up with 69 yards on 15 carries, and Tyreek Hill was going absolutely off 160 yards on 10 receptions and then also as well as Sherfield who had 55 yards on four receptions um the defense is only able to get uh to Joe Burrow once and they also only forced two tackles for loss on 62 total tackles um and just I mean not the best performance by the Dolphins obviously losing your uh, losing your starting quarterback is definitely gonna hurt um Teddy Bridgewater you know showed a lot of um some flashes of what he could be um, I think just things haven't worked out with a lot of teams in the league. Uh, but I, I think he's going to be a solid starting quarterback for this game, at least. Um, he showed some really good plays against the Bengals. Uh, they just weren't really able to get a win, both by the poor defensive play and just also kind of uh, a flip in the offense. Um, uh, they were definitely talking about it on the broadcast how uh, now the the right tackle a right guard is going to be playing, you know, the blind side for Teddy Bridgewater since, you know, before, since Tua is a left-handed quarterback, it's usually the left side of the offensive line, so, uh, you know, that's definitely a big change for their offense, um, them needing all of that to be, you know, sorted out, especially during the middle of the game, so, um, and Dolphins just weren't able to get that win against the Bengals. Now, as for the Jets, can they bury very close win against the Steelers. Zach Wilson's first game back um, from injury, and uh, I think he did pretty decent. I'm not gonna say he did well. Uh, 252 yards on 18 receptions uh, or 18 completions with 36 attempts. Uh, he had a touchdown and two interceptions. Uh, Brees Hall did his thing though. Uh, the rookie coming in 66 yards on 17 carries and a touchdown, and Corey Davis had 74 yards on five receptions and a touchdown. Elijah Moore had 53 yards and three receptions, and then uh, Conklin, who's had back-to-back really good games, 52 yards on three receptions as well. Um, I'm looking at New York's defense, they were able to get to uh, Kenny Pickett and. Uh, Mr. Bisky three times for some three uh, for three sacks, three tackles for loss, and 76 tack total tackles. Uh, now the team did have four interceptions, like I said. Uh, Lamarcus Joyner had two, Whitehead had one, and Carter had one. Um, I mean three three interceptions by Kenny Pickett and one interception by Mr. Bisky. Um, just overall, that that Jets defense looks pretty scary. Now they didn't play that well against Najee Harris in the run game. Um, but Najee Harris is a really good running back, but that, that Jets secondary definitely uh, is something not to mess around with. Um, uh, you know, Ahmad Sauce Gardner looks like a really good corner, as well as LaMarcus Joyner looking like a really good safety back there. So overall, I think the Jets secondary is really good. I think they just need to uh, toughen up the defensive line uh, to be able to get to the quarterback a little bit more and get those tackles for loss. Um, and... Uh, you know, just stop the run game overall, I think, is the Jets' number one goal, especially going against the Dolphins, uh, where Raheem Mostert looked like a really uh, good running back against the Bengals' uh, D-line, which Bengals' D-line is really good. Um, but as for this game, I have the Dolphins winning by six. I think it's only going to be close because, you know, the Dolphins don't have two anymore uh, for this game, so it's going to be really hard for them. Um, but, you know, now that they have a week to really prepare... 
um, or is a longer week to really prepare for a game plan without Tua um, and really get to see how the Jets play. Uh, I think the Jets just aren't good enough to beat the Dolphins for this one. So, uh, yeah, again, give me the Dolphins by six. Now, next up, we have an NFC North matchup with the Bears at the Vikings. Now, the Bears coming off of a tough loss against the Giants, a really close one. Uh, they try to, you know, pull a little bit of trickery against the Giants near there at the at the end of the game, but just wasn't really able to work out. Um, but the Bears, I mean, Justin Fields had 174 yards on 11 completions. Uh, he was sacked a whopping six times again. Something that the Bears did not work on during the offseason. It was helping out the offensive line. They did they did not do that, and that's kind of showing this season. Uh, Herbert, um, you know, did pretty good. Khalil Herbert, um, 77 yards on 19 carries, and Justin Fields at 52 yards on 7 carries. Um, Darnell Mooney, uh, I believe David Montgomery was out for this game, um, you know, with uh, injuries, things like that. So Khalil Herbert stepped in really nicely with that one. Darnell Mooney, 94 yards on four receptions. Um, but that was really it that they had uh, through the air. Um, I mean, Ebner lost a fumble there, the wide receiver. Vilas Jones lost a fumble. And Justin Fields also lost a fumble there um, in the in the backfield. And the Bears defense was only able to get to Daniel Jones once with one sack and three tackles for loss on 77 total tackles. They did also have an inter interception. Eddie Jackson had an interception, uh, which, I mean, was a terrible pass by Daniel Jones. But, um, I mean, the the Bears' defense did okay. Uh, their offense their offensive line just needs help. I think if, if the Bears were able to really boost the offensive line, I think they would definitely have a team on them that could – that could make a run at the playoffs, you know, if you add a little bit more of receiver help for them. Uh, you don't even have to get anybody really expensive uh, if you just get some free agents or even, uh, you know, kind of, you know, dabble a little bit in the draft for some wide receivers. I think you could definitely get some good uh, hits uh, to pair with Darnell Mooney um, since, uh, since, uh, sorry, since Robinson's gone. Um, that, you know, that was definitely a big hit. And the offense line is just terrible. Um, the defense line also just needs a lot of help. The, the linebacker core needs a lot of help. Uh, there's a lot of things that need to be fixing, uh, fixed for the Bears, but I think it. I think it, there's some small changes. I, I don't think you need to bring in a multi-million dollar person to really step in those roles. Uh, I think you just need some really good role players, and I think they can do their thing. Uh, it's just you know they just don't have enough. Um, I think just enough manpower that they have already now in their squad to really uh, close out these really close games. And then as for the Vikings, they got a really close win uh, out there in London against the Saints, um, winning only by three off of a game-winning field goal by Gary Joseph. Uh, now, Kirk Cousins had a pretty good game, 273 yards with 25 completions and a touchdown with one interception. He was sacked three times, however, not the best performance by the Vikings uh, offensive line. Now, Davin Cook was injured, but he still played. He was still able to play in this game with an elbow injury, I believe, um, if he did play with a brace um, and he played with a brace. So uh, he had 76 yards on 20 carries. Uh, Justin Jefferson back at it again now this is my main worry because he did have Marshawn Lattimore on him for the majority of the game and he did really well but then when he had Darius Slay and Jeff Okuda on him uh they I mean he Jeff Justin Jefferson really couldn't do much so I'm not sure if it's like who's playing again like I don't know who because I feel like I feel like as if Marshawn Lattimore is a better corner cornerback than Jeff Okuda definitely and, I mean, Justin Jefferson is doing this thing. But also, the Saints defense just doesn't also have a lot of help on that side of the ball. So, um, mainly on that strong side of the ball. So, or weak, I should say, because they, they don't really uh, pair Justin Jefferson up in, like, trips or anything. Um, so, he's usually on the weaker side of the field. Um, so, Saints don't really play uh, that much help on the weaker side of the field. So, that could be why Justin Jefferson went off. But he had 147 yards on 10 receptions. A uh, great day by him. Adam Thielen coming back as well. 72 yards on eight receptions. Uh, you know, great games by both of those guys. Um, 
Uh, the defense, two sacks, three tackles for loss on 63 total tackles. I mean, the, the Vikings are doing their thing, I think, overall. Uh, they did have the lead, but, you know, the Saints were fighting back. Saints were fighting back. I mean, they were they were leaving Jameis Winston open out there in that pocket, and he was throwing some dimes. He's an absolute dime after dime after dime after dime. I mean, he's dying them up near the end. But, uh, you know, win to a field goal battle there. Will Lutz missed the 61-yarder on a double doink. Um, graduated from Cody Park University, and the Vikings were able to get that win there. Um, but as for this game, it's a big NFC North game, really getting to know who's going to be at the top of the leaderboard here. And I think the Vikings definitely need this win, so I'm going to get the Vikings this win by six. Now next up, we have the Titans at the Commanders. Now the Titans did their thing. Uh, the past two weeks, uh, beating the Raiders and now beating the Colts. Um, and, I mean, th these were both really two big games for Derrick Henry, showing that, you know, he's still the running back that he used to be uh, with back-to-back 100-plus -back yard games. Um, you know, the first two games against the Giants and Eagles uh, weren't really that promising. Or, sorry, Bills. Uh, against the <laughs> against the Giants and Bills, not the Eagles. Um, I think, you know, those were really promising. I mean, those were really bad games for him, but this, these two games, really promising for him. Um, and it's shown that he, he's back. He's definitely back. Um, and as for the commanders, I mean, he wasn't really, I mean, you know, the commanders weren't really doing that good. Uh, Carson Wentz had 170 yards on 25 completions, one touchdown, two interceptions, and was sacked twice. Uh, the rushing game wasn't really doing anything. The receiving game really wasn't doing anything. Uh, the defense only got one sack on Cooper Rush and only seven tackles for a loss on 59 total tackles. Just overall, the commanders were not doing good on either side of the ball. Um, but as for this game, I do have the Titans winning by one. I think I just need one more game from the Titans, one more sample game from them to see if they really are, you know, back to the levels that they were at last season. Uh, this may be a little bit of an easier game, but I still want to keep it close. So still giving the Titans by one, but I think it could be more than that. Now next we have the Seahawks at the Saints. Now the Seahawks coming off of a really close win against the Lions. And luckily I had, uh, as much as I hate the Seahawks now, just kidding now, as much as uh, the Seahawks did beat the Lions, at least I had Geno Smith on my fantasy squad. He had like 30 plus points. It was great to see that. Uh, Geno Smith, speaking of Geno Smith, he had 320 yards on 23 completions, two touchdowns, zero, interse uh, zero interceptions, and the offensive line was doing their thing with zero sacks, and Rashad Penny was able to go off as well, 151 yards, 17 carries, and two touchdowns, um, and DK Metcalf was going off. The one week I benched DK Metcalf, he, wants, he, just, he just wants to go off. Uh, 149 yards, seven receptions. Uh, Tyra Lockett was also doing his thing, 91 yards, six receptions. Um, Tyra Lockett did fumble on that one punt, on the lines that were able to get it back. Um, and then also the fumble, I guess you could say, on the onside kick. Seahawks were able to get that one back. Um, but, I mean, really, the Lions were, or sorry, not the Lions, but the Seahawks were able to only get one sack and only one tackle for loss. Um, Lions defense did pretty good. I mean, overall, the Seahawks defensive performance against the Lions was really bad. Um, and so far during the season, the Seahawks defense defensive performance has been pretty bad uh, but the offense has done really good um so this one there's there's a win lose situation here if the seahawks offense doesn't do good against the saints there's a good chance that they could lose this game now as for the saints they did lose another close game uh against the vikings um i mean or not did i say Jameis winston was open i'm tripping man. i was <laughs> i was tripping man i because <laughs> I was talking about the Vikings, I was saying Jameis Winston was wide open throwing dots. Uh, it was Andy Dalton. I don't know why I thought Jameis Winston. That's that's weird. Okay, but Andy Dalton. I mean, he had 20 completions, 236 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Latavius Murray going up against his former team in the Vikings, 57 yards and 11 carries with a touchdown. And then Chris Olave starting off uh, his probably his best receiving game so far of his career. Uh, 67 yards, four receptions, and a touchdown. Uh, Marquez Callaway, 53 yards and three receptions. And um, I mean, that, you know, that was about it for them. Now the Saints, you know, Andy Dalton did fumble 
and did lose one. And then Hardy also fumbled and lost that one. And the Saints defense was able to get three sacks and only three tackles for loss on 66 total tackles. And Tyron Matthew did have an interception, which was pretty crucial in the game. Um, but overall, they just, you know, they, they, you know, they almost had a lead and they got in the field goal kicking match. Wasn't able to get much. Could have kicked it to tie. Will Lutz again graduated from Cody Parkey University. Missed the kick, double doink, and they ended up losing the game. Um, but as for this one, I think I think it's going to be still a close one. But uh, give me the Seahawks by five, especially if the Seahawks offense does their thing. Now next up, I have the 49ers at the Panthers. Now the 49ers coming off of a win. Uh, yesterday, Monday night, against the Rams, uh, winning by 15. Um, I mean, Jimmy G did his thing, 16 completions, 239 yards, and a touchdown. Um, and, I mean, their offensive line did their thing as well. No sacks allowed. Jeff Wilson had 74 yards on 18 carries and a touchdown. And then Debo Samuel went off with 115 yards and six receptions. Uh, that 157-yard reception was pretty big, and he also had a touchdown with that one as well. Uh, McLeod did fumble, but uh, they didn't lose any fumbles, luckily. Um, I mean, I mean, the 49ers were getting in the backfield, though. Seven, seven sacks, nine tackles for loss on 68 total tackles. I mean, their defense was doing their thing. They were, they were eating the Rams alive. Um, and then as for the Panthers, uh, tough loss against the Cardinals. Uh, they lost by 10. Um, and I had the Panthers winning this one. I kind of believe in the defense, but. They really, the defense really couldn't pull through here. Baker Mayfield, 197 yards on 22 completions with a touchdown and two interceptions. He was also sacked twice. Uh, I mean, the Panthers were not able to get anything off the ground as Christian McCaffrey only had 27 yards. Uh, Christian McCaffrey did have 81 receiving yards on nine receptions and a touchdown. And DJ Moore also had 50 yards on six receptions. Um... That was about it. Uh, they did lose the fumble. Baker Mayfield did fumble the ball, and they uh, lost that one. Uh, but the Panthers were only able to get one sack and only five tackles for loss on 81 total tackles. Uh, Luvu did have an interception, um, but, I mean, it just wasn't enough. Uh, their performance just wasn't good on the offensive side of the ball. The offensive line performance hasn't been the greatest. Uh, they just haven't been able to really block for Baker Mayfield, give him enough time in the pocket, and also for Christian McCaffrey to really do his thing um, like he, you know, used to. Um, so just overall, pretty bad performance by the Panthers. Um, and I think this one is going to be a pretty interesting uh, pretty interesting game. Uh, I think uh, this, this one I'm going to have to be on my upset watch again this is the third upset of the week in my predictions i had the panthers winning by two points i think the panthers can uh you know pull a little bit of an upset that they had against the giant or not giants uh against uh who was their opponent last week last last week because i, I want to say the giants but it wasn't the giants i don't think oh saints sorry i mean they they had a really good defensive performance against the saints uh they did play against james winston who was injured um, so, you know, that could have played a hand in them getting the win, but I think they can pull a little bit of defensive magic, make it, maybe Baker Mayfield has a little bit of a game, maybe Christian McCaffrey has a little bit of a game, we'll have to see, but I'm going to have the Panthers winning by two points. Now, next up, I have the Eagles at the Cardinals. Now, the Eagles coming off of a win against the Jaguars, staying as the only undefeated team in the league as of right now and looking like real Super Bowl contenders in my opinion uh, possibly a team that could come out of the NFC I do think they're gonna win the NFC East uh, I said that before the season started and it's looking like that right now uh, so definitely a team that could come out of the NFC uh, to play in the Super Bowl uh, he had uh, Jalen Hurts had 16 completions for 204 yards and uh, uh, no touchdowns and one interception. Uh, but Miles Sanders was doing his thing on the ground, 134 yards on 27 carries. A.J. Brown also did his thing, 95 yards on five receptions. Dallas Goddard, 72 yards on five receptions as well. Um, and defensively, uh, two, tackle, or two tackles for loss and uh, only 44 total tackles. Uh, um, and James Bradbury also had an interception in this one. Um, I mean, the the offensive performance by Jalen Hurts wasn't the best. I mean, he didn't throw any touchdowns. So yeah, he did throw an interception, so not the best ratio there. 
and A.J. Brown was going off as well, A.J. Brown and Dallas Goddard. Um, so I think they can definitely mess around with a play-action type of playbook. I think that would be great for them, um, mainly fit from that most because of the performance by Miles Sanders and then also the uh, performance by you know A.J. Brown and Dallas Goddard. A play-action uh, type of scheme would definitely work for them. And then as for the Cardinals, they're coming off of a pretty bad or uh, I mean they come off a bad streak but you know they kinda of come back they did get a win over the uh Panthers. Uh Kyler Murray had two hundred seven yards on twenty three completions with two touchdowns and an interception. Uh James Conner did have fifty five rushing yards on fifteen attempts. And then uh you know Marquise Brown or Marquez Brown had uh eighty eight yards on six receptions and one touchdown. Um defensively they were able to get two sacks four total tackles um so a a decent performance but uh defensively just wasn't the best i mean jj hart uh jj jj hart jj watt needed his heart uh in place i believe what was it uh thursday during practice um and uh that was a little bit frightening uh to hear um but it does look like he is okay uh, he said he was okay he did play in the game he had a crucial tip pass as well in the game as well, um, and that you know that was great to see there. Um, but the Cardinals were able to get it done. I think their offensive performance was really good. Uh, Kyler Murray did great, uh, especially him and Hollywood Brown. They're connecting really well uh, with this uh, without D Hop, and so far they're at two and two. So uh, we'll have to see. But can't wait to see this offense once D Hop gets back into it. Only two more weeks left, I want to say. Yeah, because week. Uh, week five, so yeah, this game and then next game, and then uh, and then he'll be in by seven. I think the Eagles just overall are are a better team, and I think the Eagles defense will be able to shut down uh, an electric Cardinals offense. Now next up, I have the Cowboys at the Rams. Now the Cowboys coming off of a uh, win against the Commanders. Now, oh, sorry, my mic a little bit closer. Um, but now overall, I think uh, it was a great game by Ezekiel Elliott. I think you know he he was just it kind of seemed like he was just going through the motions throughout there. And I think the Cowboys really started favoring Tony Pollard over him. And I think he also saw that too. So I think he just knew that he had to go off. He had to go off, and he definitely did. Uh, he did this thing I had him on my fantasy team. Um. I mean, Cooper Rush had 223 yards on 15 completions and two passing touchdowns and was only sacked once. And then, uh, I mean, Zeke, 49 yards on 19 attempts isn't the best, but um, he did get more carries than Tony Pollard and more yards. So I think that definitely shows that, you know, he's starting to get a little bit more trust in the offensive scheme. C.D. Lamb was doing his thing, 97 yards, six receptions and a touchdown. Um I'm sorry. Um, I mean, no, no. Brown was doing his thing before he got injured. Sixty-one yards on three receptions, and uh, I mean, overall, pretty good. Um, looking at the defense, uh, they Trayvon Diggs did get an interception as well as uh, Bland, um, and then I mean, just overall, just it, it was a pretty good defensive performance by the Cowboys and a overall good through the air uh, offensive attack by the Cowboys um, and then looking at the Rams they were able to get a or they sorry they lost against the 49ers um, wasn't a really good performance Matthew Stafford had 254 yards on 32 completions zero touchdowns and an interception again he was sacked seven times uh, the offensive line was not doing their thing Daryl Henderson only had 27 rushing yards I mean Cooper Cup was going off uh, as usual 122 yards 14 receptions uh, uh, Tyler Higby 73 yards 10 receptions um, I mean you know common stats there uh, but I mean overall just defensively they weren't doing good um, offensively through the offensive line they the offensive line was not you know really doing anything um, so it just was not looking like a great performance overall. Now, this one kind of seems like a defense versus offense type of situation. It's the Rams defense. I think they're definitely going to be able to overpower the Cowboys offense. But I think the Cowboys defense will be able to overpower 
the Rams offense. So I think it's going to be a relatively low scoring game. Um, but I, I got my what fourth upset of the week. I got the Cowboys winning this one and Cooper Rush being crowned king of Dallas. Okay. If, if Cooper Rush is able to win this one, everybody's going to go crazy. I had the Cowboys winning this one by six. I think it's going to be really low scoring just because of the defensive skill on um, both teams. So I don't think the off- either offense is going to really produce well. So, uh, But give me the Cowboys by six. Now next up, I have an AFC North matchup in the Bengals at the Ravens on Sunday night football. Now the Bengals coming off of a win against the Dolphins on Thursday night football. Uh, Joe Burrow, 20 completions for 287 yards and two passing touchdowns. He was only sacked once. And then Joe Mixon, 61 yards on 24 rushes and a touchdown. Uh, you know Higgins had 124 yards on seven receptions and a touchdown. Jamar Chase this thing, 81 yards on four receptions. Um, looking at the defense, uh, not much. I mean, they were able to get a sack. Uh, Tupo had a sack. Um, but that was really about it. Uh, I think the only thing that's really kind of holding the Bengals down, I, I would say, is their defensive ability. The defense is kind of lacking this year compared to, you know, the previous season. So I think if they're able to, you know, build up that defense, I think they can, get, they can definitely get more uh, out of the team. Um, but, you know, the Bengals are doing okay on offense. Now, as for the Ravens, they're coming off of a really close loss to the bills i had them winning by three they lost by three um and i mean lamar jackson is him okay lamar jackson having an mvp like season he's doing great he's doing his thing he's been on himself he wants to get paid um and he hasn't been paid yet by the way which is crazy uh he had 144 yards 20 completions and a passing touchdown he did have two interceptions and he was sacked twice um, but Lamar Jackson also had 73 rushing yards and on 11 rushes. And Devin DuVernay did his thing 51 yards on four receptions. Um, that 21-yard catch was a really big one, too. I saw that. That was pretty cool. Um, Marlon Humphrey did have an interception. Marlon Humphrey did also have words, I believe. It was either Marlon Humphrey or Marcus Peters. Uh, one of them did have words <laughs> with John Harbaugh uh, after the game. Um, but overall, I mean, it's just, uh, the Ravens choking away two leads that they had. Um, and I think it's mainly through the defense. Um, the offensive ability is a little bit weak, uh, at times I would say their offense hasn't really been producing, but then again, they don't really have that many receivers, uh, that are notable and their defense just their, their defensive line hasn't really been doing much either. So, I mean, the Ravens, I think, is just kind of an on or off with them. Um, but as for this game, I do have the Ravens beating the uh, Bengals by uh, seven. I think it's going to be a one-score game. I think it's going to be close. I think the Bengals have a really good offense to really you know, overpower the Ravens defense. I think the Ravens have a really good offense. to. So basically, the opposite of the Cowboys-Rams game, I think it's going to be an offensive game. It's going to be an offensive shootout. Uh, but give me the Ravens here because I think they just have a s- slightly better defense and also just a slightly better team overall com- compared to the Bengals. And then next up, the last matchup on Monday Night Football, we have the Raiders at the Chiefs. Now the Raiders getting their first win against the Broncos. Um, big win that they needed to do in division. Um, I mean, they they got it done. They got it done. Um, that's really all that matters. The one by nine, uh, Derek Carr, 21 completions, 188 yards. He was sacked twice. I mean, Josh Jacobs. Okay. Uh, he was declined that fifth year option. Josh McDaniels was like, mm, I don't really know what I should do with them. We're kind of, kind of questioning his ability. Um, but he showed him, he showed him 144 yards, 28 reception or sorry on 28 rushes. For two touchdowns, Devontae Adams had 101 yards on nine receptions. I mean, the team was just overall really clicking in this one. Uh, they were able to get three sacks on defense, two by Crosby and one by Hobbs coming off uh, DB Blitz. I mean, it, it was just a great, great, great game by the Raiders. They were really connecting on all cylinders, and I think 
Uh, they just need to continue to do that here in this season. Now the Chiefs coming off of a pretty big win on Sunday Night Football against the Buccaneers. Um, I mean, uh, Patrick Mahomes did his thing. 23 completions, 249 yards, 3 passing touchdowns, and an interception. Um, and he was sacked three times. Uh, but Clyde Edwards Hilaire did his thing. 92 yards on 19 rushes uh, with uh, two, oh, sorry, with one touchdown. And then Isaiah Pacheco, uh, or Pacheco, had 63 yards on 11 rushes. Um, and then receiving wise, I had Travis Kelsey on my fantasy team. He was going off 92 yards on nine receptions. Uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling, 63 yards on three receptions. He was doing his thing. Uh, you know, defensively, they were, they were only able to get to Tom Brady once, um, but their rushing attack was really good. Uh, they were really able to limit the Buccaneers' rushing attack, and they couldn't do much. And that is something that the Chiefs are going to need for this game as well, stopping Josh Jacobs coming off of a really good game against the Broncos. Um, but as for this one, I do have the Chiefs winning by eight. I think they're definitely the better team, as much as it hurts me to have the Chiefs win and beat the Raiders. Uh, you know, I want the Raiders to continue to do well. I mean, hey, it's going to be a win for me on the sheet. and uh, But, you know, if the Raiders end up winning, then it's going to be a win for me personally. So, I mean, overall, I think it's just um, I think it's just going to be a close game. But I think the Chiefs just overall are the better team. And that'll be all for today's episode. Thank you for listening all the way through. If you did get to this point or watching all the way through, if you're uh, watching on YouTube. Uh, now, if you are watching on YouTube, make sure you go ahead Go down there and leave a comment, like, subscribe, and also share with anybody that you think may be interested in this video. Uh, and then if you are, are listening on the podcast version on any podcast platform, make sure you go ahead and leave a follow for the podcast and also leave the podcast a five-star review. That would be greatly appreciated. Um, and also, you know, just thank you for all the support so far. Uh, it's been it's been a great journey. Uh, there, you know, we're we're really growing here and. I love to see that, um, and can't wait, and, you know, to continue the success that uh, we as a channel are having. Uh, it's been great um, so far. My record uh, for the season is twenty five thirty eight and one, and your guys' record is thirty four twenty nine and one. So if you do want to participate um, and have a say in what your guys' record is, I would recommend going ahead and following uh, my Instagram at sports or sorry, sport underscore stories underscore podcast on Instagram again, sport underscore stories underscore podcast. And I'll post all the games there on my story and then you could just vote them on a poll. And then, uh, you know, you guys have a say in what your record is uh, for the season. But you guys are doing really good on the season. Um, so, you know, keep it up, keep the voting up. And if you're new, make sure you go ahead and vote, follow the Instagram, vote and do all that. Um, but again, thank you for listening and watching all the way through and have a great rest of your day. Bye.